Hi guys, Helen from crystalsandcrochet.com here. In this video tutorial I would like to try to help some of you to understand colour a little bit more. I have quite a few um, posts on my website, blog posts about colour, but quite a few people have said they would like to see a video tutorial because they understand things a little bit better this way. So what I'm going to do is explain the basic principles of colour and how to put colours together. Okay, so the colour swatches that I'm using are all Stylecraft Special Double Knit, which has a really great range of colours. Okay, these are my little sort of test squares, but mostly when I'm choosing colours, I use these little um, embroidery thread cards that I've just wrapped yarn around. I know some people use lollipop sticks, some people have sets of pegs, and there's quite a few people on Etsy that um, make the colour pegs, and you can buy them there. But let us start at the very beginning. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a weeny bit. There we go. Okay. So, we have three primary colours, yellow, red and blue. Okay, if you take yourself right back to primary school when you first picked up water-based paints and you started to paint and mix colours, this may sort of bring back, if you like, a little lesson to you. So three primary colours, yellow, blue and red. These three colours are the foundation for every colour there is. Okay, the only thing that will make any difference to these colours is if you add black or white. Black will make the colour darker white will make the colour lighter. Okay, so if you add white to yellow it becomes a paler yellow. If you add black to blue it becomes a darker blue. If you add white to red it becomes a pink. Okay, so Black will make the colour darker, white will make the colour lighter. Okay, if we mix yellow, if we mix all three colours together, we just get this sort of muddy brownie colour, that sort of thing. Okay, so if we mix yellow, and blue, we get green. So these are primary colours, this is a secondary colour. If we mix red and yellow, we get an orange. And if we mix red and blue, we get purple or a violet. Okay, so we've got three primary colours and we've now got three secondary colours. If we go beyond that, adding more red than blue, we'll get a magenta, okay, which is in between our purple and our red. If we add more blue to the mix, we will get um, actually this one. Okay, bluebell. 
it's definitely got violet in there but it's more towards the blue. If we mix more yellow than blue, so we're going to come onto the blue side of green, we're going to get a turquoise type colour. If we mix even more yellow and we come onto the yellow side of our green, we get a much warmer yellowy green. If we mix more yellow to our orange, we're going to get a colour like saffron. Okay, so remember here are our three primaries. Then we have our secondary colours. Here. And then we get what's known as a tertiary colour. So it's adding more of one primary. Let's just put these all together in a line. There we go. Okay, so you can see coming from yellow, we blend down through orange to red, and then we come from the red through violet towards blue, and then we come from the blue back coming towards the yellow through shades of green. Okay. Now again, our colour wheel has a warm side and a cool side. And you can see there if we go from orange towards red, we've got a much deeper, more red orange. Okay, what have we got? Missing nothing, there we go. Okay, so pull these down so that we can see them all. That's it. Okay, so a warm colour is predominantly going to have more yellow and red in it and a cooler colour is going to have more blue in it. Okay, so from this green round through to here are cooler colours and from this green round and through here are warmer colours. The primaries are actually almost neutral in that they don't predominantly have anything other than their own colour. So yellow is yellow, but as soon as you start to mix a tiny little bit of blue, it will start to turn green. If you add a tiny bit of red, it will start to turn orange. I know some people really struggle with colour, but if you start simple, it becomes much, much easier to learn. Okay, so let's just look at some neutrals for a minute. Let me pull these out of the way and we'll have a look at some neutrals. There's my white there. Black coming down through shades of grey to white. Like when you go into a paint store and you see the cards 
that they have with the various different shades of a colour. And it will normally go from the darkest to the lightest. And that's exactly what I've done here. Okay, so when we talk about the depth of a colour, that is how light or dark it is. When we talk about tone, we are talking about the combination of colours. Okay, so these are cool neutrals. They don't have any yellow in them. These are warm neutrals that do have yellow in them. Okay, so again, you can look at it in this way, that this side is going to be more yellow toned, this side is going to be more blue toned. When you work with any colours, using neutrals will help to make the actual colours that you're using pop or stand out. Okay, let me just move these out of the way. And these. So, let's look at choosing some colours. Start off by deciding one main colour you want to use. <clears throat> so let's say you are making something for a little girl and she likes pink. Gonna zoom in a weeny bit again. Oops, in that's it. Okay, so let's say our little girl likes pink. Now, pink obviously is a combination of red and white. Okay, so we could put red with it and we could put white with it. But if we don't want to go this dark, that's fine. We might want to go for a different shade of pink to keep everything the same. You might literally just want to go for two colours. Or if you feel that white's a little bit too harsh, you can always bring in a silver. Remember the colour wheel where you've got yellow, red and blue with those other colours in between. If we look at, let me zoom out again, so, whoops, sorry, wrong way. Okay, we've got yellow, red and blue, we've got green in between there, we've got violet in here, and then we've got orange in here. Okay, so a pink is basically a red. If we want a colour to harmonise, okay, so to blend and to give more flow, then we just come one step around either way, okay? So we could either bring in a soft slightly orangey pink or we could bring in a soft slightly violet pink. Okay so we've just come slightly round to violet or slightly round to orange. This gives our colours harmony and blend. If we want something 
to make our colours pop and sing a little bit, then what we're going to do is come opposite with what's known as a contrasting or complementary colour. Okay, so complementary colours are opposite. So for anything red based, which is what our pinks are, we need to come over to green. And there are so many different shades of green, but let's just bring in a nice soft green. It still blends, but it gives us some contrast. If we were to go more towards the yellow green, say, with lime, you can immediately see how it starts to, to leap out, to jump out against the colours. Okay, so harmonising colours are either side, complementary colours or contrasting colours are opposite. Okay, so exactly the same thing applies if we decide that we wanted to use blues. And so we wanted to use three shades of blue. We've got lapis, aster, and cloud blue here. And I want then to use a harmonizing color. I could bring in a green, like sage. Okay, so green is one colour round from our blue. Or I could bring in something like lavender. Okay, here's our blue. Violet is one colour round. If I want to make it pop, I'm going to go opposite and bring in an orange. So maybe even copper. or apricot, they're both oranges. And if I want to use a neutral again, these blues are cool toned, so my neutrals would be something like my greys. Okay, it's just about deciding how you want your colours to look. Do you want something that is has flow to it, is um, a sort of a very classical or a very classy um, colour palette? Do you want something that's going to be um, quite contemporary, quite different? So, for instance, what you might decide is that you want to do something that's really very, very um, striking and different. You might add something, you might use something like a black, a bright pink and a lime green. OK, so our pink is here on our red, our lime green's over here between yellow and green. So we've used a complementary contrasting colours here and then our neutral is black so that will give a lot of contrast and pop to the colour. The next thing to look at is the amount of the colours that you would put together. So say you were going to make a blanket just using these three colours, you would then need to decide are you going to use them in equal amounts? Are you predominantly going to have a black blanket with pops of pink and lime? Or would you have a lime blanket with little bits of pink and black? That part of things is completely up to you. 
Okay, the last thing that I want to look at is what I call the value of colour. Now, the value of colour is not only the tone, it's the depth, it's how light or dark a colour is. And when you are putting colours together, if, for instance, you're doing a baby blanket, you might just want to use some pastel, not that one, that one some pastel colours, maybe with cream, just really, really soft. But if you look at these, there's not a great deal of difference in the colours. Yes, we've got a little bit more blue here, we've got a little bit more yellow here, but they're all very light. And if you want your projects to have impact, then there needs to be a difference between light and dark colours. If you have something that's all pretty much the same um, depth of colour, it's not really going to have a great deal of impact even though the colours might look quite different in that you've got more pinky colours, more orangey, more yellowy, more greeny, more blue, more purple, there's nothing really to break it up other than the colour. So if we start to break these colours up, and we decide that Bluebell and Aster, okay, this is a slightly more violet blue, but they're almost the same level of lightness, darkness. So let's take away the Bluebell and bring in Lapis, which is a darker colour. If it's not dark enough, even bring in some midnight by using little bits of darker around the mid-toned, these are all mid-toned colours, by using a little bit of darker it will make these mid-toned colours pop up more. <clears throat> by using something lighter, that's not light enough, let's go, let's put white in there, by using something lighter, again, we make it pop. And again, if we take out the saffron and bring in lemon, again, it's lighter. And you can see immediately how this jumps out more by having lighter and darker colours mixed together. There's a lot of um, sorry, I'm just trying to. There's a lot of um, people who will tend to always stick with the same colours. It's like um, we have a safe zone. Okay, so try to step out of it. So if you're going to use three colours, let's go with these, okay. So here, this one's warm, so we've got copper tomato, vintage peach. On this side, we've got cooler colours, plum, grape and mushroom, okay. Plum and grape are both sort of mid to dark colours. Mushroom is light. Copper and tomato again, mid. Copper may be going slightly towards the darker side. Vintage peach is just getting a little bit lighter. 
We've got a lighter colour here, but we really need to add something with some depth here. We could come in very purple with Emperor, or we could mix in something like graphite to give more depth to that colour. We could also bring in some silver to give another lighter colour. For the warmer colours we can bring in cream or maybe parchment to give us some lighter colours. We could even bring in soft peach. which again follows the flow of these colours. And then to bring in something darker, we would want something maybe like a dark brown. Okay, let's just move those out of the way a little bit. So remember, you've got your three primary colours, your colour wheel, then you're going to look at, do you want your colours to harmonise? Do you want them to contrast? Look at the tone, how yellow or blue your colours are, how warm or cool. Then look at the value, the depth of the colours to make sure that you've got interest within your colours as to how light or dark they are and that you have a variation of light, medium and dark colours. If you are going to use a variegated yarn which is great for knitting but with crochet doesn't always work that well unless you're doing lots and lots of plain stitches because if the colour of the yarn is too busy it will take away from the texture of the stitches. Okay, but if the stitches are plain you can get busy with your yarn. Okay, so as I said, I've got quite a few posts on my website, which is www.crystalsandcrochet.com. Hopefully this will have helped to explain a little bit more easily, more visually about colour and how to put colours together. Thanks for watching.